So let me give you the basic idea of what we're going to do. We're going to use fractal noise to produce an image that has white parts and black parts. Now they're not sharply demarcated like this. There'd be gradations of gray in between, but this is what we need for our general discussion. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate that so that the uh, white part uh, gets smaller and the black part expands out. And that black part is what's going to basically eat away into our image. But we also need to, just inside the leading edge of the expanding black part, create a thin rim because we're going to make that glow with fire to give the appearance that it's actually burning. Let's go ahead and get started. The key to this whole project is really starting off and uh, using the fractal noise to help us create a believable flame or uh, ember, if you will. So that's what we're going to start with, the first composite shot. Uh, we're going to rename that composite shot to Noise. And its duration needs to be 10 seconds. And we need to add a plane, a black plane will be perfect. And then to that plane, we're going to add an effect. And that effect is Fractal Noise. I have to admit, I don't really know anything at all about fractal noise. I had to play around with this to get the kinds of uh, changes that I wanted to get. So you can either follow right along with me and do what I do, and maybe I want to play later or make it better, uh, or else do your own thing. The fractal noise type, I'm going to use the uh, internal type of clouds. And then under the transform properties here, we're going to increase the scale. And I decided to go up to about 440.5. And in the sub settings, there are a number of different settings that are here. Let's actually look at the controls over here. So the sub levels, I changed that to 20 because I thought it provided me a, a better appearance. The influence, I dropped down just a little bit to 41. And then the scale, I dropped down to a tiny little bit, 49%, because it just looked a little bit better to me. Okay, then we come down to the appearance settings. In color one, we're going to leave it black with the opacity of 100. Now, our whole goal in the process of making this noise is to go from basically pure white to pure black over the course of our 10 seconds. And also at that time, the noise itself will have a pattern that's kind of organic and uh, will uh, gradually change. So that's the beauty of the fractal noise. At time uh, zero, we're going to go ahead and set our appearance keyframes for the exposure and also for the offset. So at the beginning, we really want the exposure to be a high value. It's going to be 3.08. At one second in, we're going to take that exposure down to 1.2. And on the offset, we're going to start at 0.07. And then very quickly, just, uh, you know, 22 frames in or so, not even a second, we're going to take that exposure to minus 0.18. So now we can start to see some of the, the black holes appearing within our noise. Then we're going to go almost to the end, 9 uh, seconds and 26 frames. And here, we're going to take that expo or that offset down to minus 0.68. And so as we scrub through this, you can see that we we go from white to basically black. And you're going to see that it's these dark areas where uh, as they grow, they're going to engulf our image and make our flame. Okay, so uh, for the moment we're done with that. We need to make a couple other tools to help us make this effect though. So we need to make another composite. And this one, we're just going to call inverted noise. That's all it's going to be. It's going to be noise plus an effect added to it. Not surprisingly, it's the invert effect. And you see, we're going to use that to actually find the edges. Okay, now we need to do a little tweaking on our noise because we're going to want to have some sharper transitions from black to white as a tool. So we're going to create another composite shot and I'm just going to call it Tweaked Noise. 
And in that shot, we're going to put our noise. And then we're going to tweak this by simply adding the curves effect. We're going to do something that looks kind of drastic, but we're going to add a couple of points to the curve. If I move a little further in, you can see what we're doing. We're really trying to clearly define the black parts from the white parts. And I really uh, want to have almost no gray in this tweaked image. And we, we want to keep um, the black size a little bit on the smaller size than it is in the real noise. So next, we're going to create edges. Edges from where this noise is expanding in the black as it comes out. So we're going to create another new composite shot. I'm just going to call it edges. And to the edges, we're going to have uh, add our inverted noise. And then we also need to have our tweaked noise here. We don't need to see it, but we're going to use that as a, a mat for our inverted noise. So, so you can see what we're doing. I'm just going to move a little bit farther on here. So you can see this is white in the uh, inverted noise and it's black in the noise itself. So we're going to add the set mat effect. In the set mat effect, the source is going to be our tweaked noise. It doesn't have an alpha. We're going to use luminance and it's going to be replaced. And if you see right away what happened there is you see that the black area on the tweaked noise is punching a hole in the inverted noise. And that's exactly what we want this to do. We want to have a hole here where the black part is. And we want to be able to sculpt out a red, or not a red, a, a white high intensity area around that expanding black part as the image continues on, because that's where our, our burning is going to be occurring. We want to highlight that and use that to our advantage. But we need to get rid of some of this gray stuff, the stuff that uh, isn't really bright. So. Let's use another effect. Let's add the curves again after the uh, set matte effect. We come over here and look at the curves. We want to have very little in the way of, of uh, whites, and we want to have our, our blacks here. So we're going to try and push this down so that we just don't have those areas. I want a thin little sharp white area around each of my expanding black areas. So there we go. Let's try to brighten up those edges because we need them very bright. So let's add another effect. Let's add, uh, let's try brightness and contrast. Let's push up that uh, brightness. Let's see what we can get here as we push up on the brightness. That's too far. It's just washing everything out. Let's try about 30. And we want the contrast as high as we can get it. Yeah, as you can see, we've got a little bit of an edge around each one of these expanding areas, but that's still not bright enough to do what we needed to do. So let's try the crushed blacks and whites this time. We are going to want to have our whites all the way up, so we're going to do that. We also want to crush those blacks, the areas that are black. So let's push this up and see if we can't force that to be a nice bright white line. I like that. That looks good. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is all I really want is these white lines. I don't want any black. I want to have transparency in the black part. And the way we do that is use another effect. We're going to use the bolt. Pop that baby on. So all we now have is these very bright ridges that expand out. Single. So they will help us create the illusion of burning. So the next thing we uh, want to do is we're going to create some embers because they'll they'll help us along with our, our burning um, illusion here. So let's create another new composite shot. I'm going to call it embers. I've got my edges here. Let's move this up open so you can see it. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a particle system to this. So we're going to look just like that. Now, I'm not going to read off every single uh, setting I have for the particle system. You can copy them down from here. But one of the most important things to remember is that you do need to set the shape of the emitter to layer, the source to edges, and to check the use layer alpha. Because we want these particles to arise from the edges.
So the, the sparks are coming off of the surfaces that we've created. And we don't need to see the edges anymore. So next, let's go ahead and create smoke. And in fact, our smoke will be very, very similar. We're going to create a new composite shot. And to that, we're going to need our edges. And we don't have to see that either. We need a particle simulation. And under the emitters, the shape again is going to be coming from a layer. The source layer is the edges. And we want to use alpha. And we don't need to use layer color. Again, you can copy my particle setup from uh, these images. Gives a black background to look against. There's our little puffs of smoke that would come up. So we've completed all the elements we need to make this clip. We've got the complete clip set up in a separate comp. And as you can see, I have added some elements to this comp. I have the smoke composite, the embers composite, our edges composite. I've added a treasure map for us to burn up. And then we have the tweak noise. Finally, I have just a black plane on the bottom just so the transparency uh, shows up as black. So if we look at what we've done here, uh, we can just go ahead and quickly play out the smoke and embers. And you can see how nice the smoke looks and the embers are certainly adding realism to the whole view. And then if we look at our edges as they come out, we see that we've got some a little bit more work to do because they're white. So we'll go into the edges and we will add a tint. And I've created kind of an orange color tint here. And then we're going to add a glow as well. And that glow is pretty intense. 2.5 is the intensity, the threshold is 40%. The radius is small at 36 pixels. The blending mode is screen. And so when that glow and the orange edge come together, get a nice kind of yellow fiery look to it. That turns out very, very nice. And then the final thing that we have to do is that on the image that we want to actually burn, we have to set the set matte effect. So we've added that. We're using the tweaked noise as the source layer, luminance as the matte source, and replace. And that leads to the burning through of the image effect. There it is, the burning image effect, no fire required. Have fun with this. Hopefully you learned a little something that you can use. Bye for now.